Testament and the New Testament. We then covered the story of Jesus' birth as told in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke. Matthew and Luke recorded genealogies identifying Jesus of Nazareth as a descendant of King David. Now, why was Jesus' genealogy important? Well, God revealed to the Old Testament prophets that the Messiah would be a descendant of King David. In order for Jesus to be the Messiah, he had to be in David's lineage. Jesus of Nazareth was a descendant of King David. We also reviewed Jesus' early ministry. When Jesus was about 30 years old, he sought out John the Baptist and was baptized. Jesus' baptism marked the start of his public ministry. Now, Apostle John is the only gospel writer who described Jesus' early ministry. It began shortly after Jesus' baptism, and it covered a period of about one year. In this lesson, we'll look at the next two years of Jesus' ministry, called Jesus' ministry in Galilee. This phase of Jesus' ministry is described in all four Gospels. During this two-year period, Jesus taught and performed miracles, primarily in Galilee and the surrounding areas. Jesus preached in synagogues, on mountainsides, near lake shores, and any place where people were gathered. Jesus' message helped people understand God, what pleases God, and what displeases God. We'll also provide a brief biography of Jesus' 12 disciples who were made apostles. Now, Jesus' followers initially grew large in number, and then they dwindled as religious leaders opposed Jesus' ministry. Many of Jesus' followers found his message radically different from what was taught in Jewish synagogues. Others felt his teachings were too difficult. While many of Jesus' followers abandoned him, his true disciples, the twelve apostles, and many of whom were women disciples, continued to believe in him. Now let's begin chapter 2, Jesus' ministry in Galilee. This is Big Picture of the Bible, New Testament, Chapter 2, Jesus' Ministry in Galilee, Lesson 2a. Please join me in prayer. Dear Lord God, prepare our hearts and minds to receive fresh new insights about the good news of Jesus Christ. Speak to us through the Holy Spirit as we study Jesus' mission and ministry in Galilee. Help us see how Jesus' words and his actions demonstrated your righteous and loving character. Teach us your ways so that we might bring honor and glory to your name. Amen. We'll start with the section titled, Galilean Ministry Begins. Here's our chronological timeline of the New Testament Gospels. We'll be looking at all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We'll be combining them together to tell the continuous story of Jesus Christ. Now here's our New Testament map. Most of the events in this lesson occurred in Galilee. However, some events occurred in Jerusalem of Judea. This map and timeline table are on pages 42 through 43 of Big Picture of the Bible, New Testament. After Herod Antipas had John the Baptist imprisoned, Jesus left Judea and returned to Galilee where he ministered for two years. Jesus went to the local synagogue in Nazareth and read from Isaiah saying, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. The people of Nazareth did not believe Jesus was the Messiah. They knew him as Mary and Joseph's son. So Jesus performed very few miracles in Nazareth because of the people's disbelief. Jesus left and traveled from synagogue to synagogue throughout Galilee, preaching and performing miracles. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon Peter and Andrew. Jesus invited them to join him as his full-time disciples. Peter and Andrew left their nets and followed Jesus. As Jesus walked further along the shore, he saw James and John in a boat with their father Zebedee. Jesus invited them to be his disciples as well. James and John left their father in the boat and followed Jesus. 
Jesus became well known for his healing miracles. People began bringing the sick to Jesus in large numbers. As Jesus' popularity increased, the Pharisees and other Jewish religious leaders started showing up to hear his messages. One day, Jesus was teaching to a large capacity crowd inside of a house. Some men walked in carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They wanted Jesus to heal their sick friend. The men tried to reach Jesus, but were unable to squeeze through the crowd. The men were determined to get their sick friend to Jesus, so they climbed on the roof and lowered the paralyzed man in front of Jesus. Moved by their faith, Jesus told the paralyzed man his sins were forgiven. When the Pharisees heard Jesus say the man's sins had been forgiven, they were outraged. The Pharisees interrupted Jesus and said only God could forgive sins. Jesus said he would prove his authority to forgive sins. Jesus then commanded the paralyzed man to stand up and pick up his mat. The, par the paralyzed man immediately stood up grabbed his mat, and walked home praising God. Miracles like this one were a major part of Jesus' ministry. They demonstrated and proved Jesus' power and authority. On another day, Jesus met a tax collector named Matthew, who was also called Levi. Matthew became one of Jesus' disciples. Now, Jews despised tax collectors because they collected taxes on, taxes on behalf of the Roman government. Tax collectors often overtaxed their own people, the Jews, and kept the extra money for themselves. Matthew later hosted a dinner party for Jesus. During the party, Matthew introduced Jesus to his friends. The Pharisees and other religious leaders complained about this, saying Jesus was eating and drinking with sinners. This was one of the religious leaders' major accusations against Jesus. Jesus responded to them, saying, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. Jesus later traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate one of the Jewish holy days. While at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus met a man who had been sick for 38 years. Jesus commanded the man to stand, pick up his mat, and walk. As soon as Jesus spoke these words, the man was healed. This healing miracle occurred on the Sabbath. Religious leaders chastised the man for carrying his mat on the Sabbath. The religious leaders considered carrying a mat to be work and therefore forbidden on the Sabbath. They then confronted Jesus for the healing miracle that he performed on the Sabbath. Healing was also considered to be work. Working on the Sabbath was another major accusation the Pharisees and religious leaders had against Jesus. Jesus responded to the religious leaders saying, My father is always working and so am I. When Jesus said this, the Pharisees and other religious leaders accused him of blasphemy. They said Jesus had made himself equal with God. Blasphemy was another major accusation religious leaders had against Jesus. Pharisees and other religious leaders were outraged because Jesus would not follow their man-made rules and traditions. So let's summarize the accusations the Pharisees and religious leaders had against Jesus. They accused Jesus of socializing with sinners, working on the Sabbath, and blasphemy which means making himself equal with God. All three of these were contrary to their laws. As Jesus' popularity increased, he became a clear threat to the Pharisees' tradition and their livelihood. Now for our next section, which is titled, Jesus' Message. On one Sabbath day, as Jesus and his disciples were walking through a field, they stopped and, stopped and gathered some wheat. When the Pharisees saw Jesus and his disciples gathering wheat, they reprimanded them, saying they were working on the Sabbath. Jesus responded, saying, The Sabbath was made to meet the needs of the people, and not the people for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. The Sabbath law stated, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord God. 
so in it you shall not do work. The Pharisees objected because in their sight Jesus was breaking God's law of the Sabbath. Here Jesus was pointing out that the purpose of the Sabbath was to prevent people from overworking and losing sight of God. On another Sabbath day, a man with a deformed hand was among those in the synagogue listening to Jesus' message. Some Pharisees were there also, and they were eager to see if Jesus would heal the man. Jesus turned to the Pharisees and asked, Which is allowed on the Sabbath, good deeds or evil deeds? When Jesus healed the man, the Pharisees were outraged. One day, Jesus walked up the side of a mountain and found an isolated place to pray. After praying all night, Jesus chose 12 of his disciples and called them apostles. The word apostle means those sent on a mission. Jesus' Jesus's 12 apostles were Peter, who was a fisherman. Jesus changed Peter's name from Simon to Peter. Peter emerged as leader of the Twelve Apostles and was a member of Jesus' inner circle of three, Peter, James, and John. Peter also wrote two epistles. James was also a fisherman and the older brother of Apostle John. He was also a member of Jesus' inner circle and James was the first disciple to be martyred. John was a fisherman and younger brother of Apostle James. He was a member of Jesus' inner circle also, Peter, James, and John. John wrote the Gospel of John, three epistles, and Revelation. Before his death on the cross, Jesus gave John responsibility for taking care of his mother Mary. Andrew, Andrew was a fisherman and Simon Peter's brother. When Andrew discovered Jesus was the Messiah, he found his brother Peter and shared the good news with him. Another apostle was Philip. Philip was from Bethsaida, Peter and Andrew's hometown. Philip was one of the first disciples Jesus asked to follow him. Philip told Nathaniel about Jesus. Now, Bartholomew was also called Nathaniel in John's Gospel. Nathaniel asked if anything good could come from Nazareth. Jesus called him an honest man, and Nathaniel declared Jesus to be the Son of God. Matthew was also one of the apostles. He was a tax collector who was also called Levi. Jews thought tax collectors were dishonest and sinful. Matthew held the banquet and introduced his tax collector friends to Jesus, as we talked about earlier. Matthew wrote the Gospel of Matthew. Thomas. Thomas was a twin. He was the disciple who doubted the other disciples' claim that Jesus had risen from the dead. This is where the saying, he or she is a doubting Thomas, came from. Another apostle was James. James, the son of Alphaeus, is referred to as James the Less or James the Younger in Mark's Gospel. There's not much information about James. However, it should be noted that this James is not James, the brother of John, and he is not James, the brother of Jesus. Simon, Simon was a zealot. Zealots were militant extremists who were strongly opposed to Roman rule. They believed only God should rule over Palestine. In today's times, we would have called Simon a terrorist. Did you know there were two disciples named Judas? This Judas was called Judas the son of James in Luke's Gospel. John's Gospel referred to him as Judas, not Iscariot. There's not much information about this Judas either. Lastly, there was Judas, Judas Iscariot. He was the disciple who betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Now, one day a large crowd gathered near a mountain to hear Jesus. Jesus taught the large crowd from the mountainside and announced the good news of God's kingdom. Jesus' message is called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus taught saying, serve God wholeheartedly without hypocrisy, 
He told the people to let others see God's character in them and give God the glory. He said, put God first and make him a priority in your life. Keep a godly perspective while going about your daily routine. Love your neighbors and pray for your enemies. Jesus also said, do not retaliate or judge others. And he said, choose God's way, for it leads to eternal life. Jesus said many other things while he was on this, uh, his message on the Sermon of the Mount, which you can read in Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, through chapter 7, verse 29. Jesus taught about the blessed rewards of living for God. These blessed rewards are often called the Beatitudes. And you can read about them in Matthew 5th chapter, verses 1 through 12. Jesus provided a model prayer known as the Lord's Prayer, which is in Matthew 6th chapter, 9th verse through the 13th verse. Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and power and glory forever. Amen. We'll pause our lesson here. Please start Lesson 2B to continue Chapter 2 of Big Picture of the Bible, New Testament, Jesus' ministry in Galilee.